Amen. God is awesome. Yeah. 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 Come on. Absolutely. Well, it was great to hear uh, Saul back in the saddle. Come on. Right. Come on. Right. And learning some things about his lair. That was nice. <laughs> and uh, Johnny, thank you so much for uh, sharing your heart, brother. Yes, Johnny. Yeah, that was awesome. Come on. That was and uh, I was really encouraged uh, that uh, India's here. Yeah. 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 A nice surprise. Thank you, sis, for uh, coming all the way here. Yes. Well, anyway, so um, I'm excited just to uh, close out our series in the books of Peter and. Uh, as you've been digging in, I've really been uh, learning a lot of things, really been thinking hard about some things, and I hope you have as well. And uh, you know, it, it's a busy time of year. There's a lot of things going on, right? There's always uh, distractions. There's always some great things with it as well. Uh, but, you know, we want to stay really focused. Now, we have three goals for what we're doing right here. And I want to make this really short. I want to make this powerful and uh, really allow us to focus on So our number one goal is to gain the conviction life. Gain convictions about the Christian life that you will live by. Number two is to focus your mind on what God desires. And number three, to motivate others to live the Christian life as well. Because there's no better life. There's no better life than living a life for God. Yep. Let's go to 2 Peter here, chapter 3. Come on, bro. The previous lessons that we've done from 1 Peter. And uh, we read this here in uh, 2 Peter, chapter 3 read this a few times. It's really the purpose of the letters. And he says right here in verse 1, Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. I mean, can you imagine what it was like? I mean, Peter walked with Jesus. I mean, you could say that Peter walked with Jesus as closely as anybody ever had. Yep. And now the Christians here are going to get a letter from Peter. Getting multiple letters from Peter. I mean, can you imagine being uh, a basketball fan, a Chicago Bulls fan, and now you're getting a letter from Michael Jordan. Man. You know, that's written to you, you know. And just imagine that the excitement that you would have had. And, and Peter just writing, hear what he says. Here. Why did I write them? I wrote them to remind you of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? So you ask, ask yourself, okay, what is a reminder? A reminder is a prompting. A prompting is right. to elicit a response. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Is to drive action in you. So a reminder is not just something that's an intellectual thing, just goes one in out the other. Right. Mm -hmm. It is something that stays in your mind and draws out hmm. the proper response. Right. And that's really what Peter's trying to say is that this needs to come full circle. I need you to, I need to remind you of it that it stays with you, and then it drives your action. Hmm. You understand what a reminder is, what a prompting is about. Okay, you set your alarm clock in the morning. That's to remind you to get your butt out of bed. Yeah. Right? <laughs> if you don't get out of bed, then it didn't do a very good job of reminding you. That's right. One in here, one out the other. So is that the spiritual reality that Peter is talking about hmm. is to drive our lives. And it's not just in the books of Peter. It's all over the Bible. God did such and such. Jesus Christ such and such. Therefore do this. Mm -hmm. Or since knowing this, this is what we should mm -hmm. do. That's right. So, you know, my, uh, my focus, and, you know, I got open to guys on Wednesday just about, you know, the lack of focus I've had and just bringing glory to God. Even though it gets so busy doing things, doing yeah. things for the church and doing things with people, but yet I was able to still lose my focus mm. on glorifying God and loving yeah. God. Amen. And that has just been, again, my focus of what I've been really been trying to go after. You know, Matthew 22, verse 37, Jesus says, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, with all your mind. And I've just been straining, just really meditating, trying to dig deep, deep my heart so that I can love God with all my heart. Just really trying to find out what is in there. What is in there that doesn't belong to God? Let me just sit. Let me think about it. Let me pray about it so I can just give that all to God. Come on, bro. You know, and I have uh, amazing times on uh, uh, Monday and Thursday. I take a little bit longer time with the Lord on those days uh, after services just to kind of reflect on where I'm at and reflect on where our region is at, mm -hmm. where, where our group is at. And, uh, you know, I, I go down by the river. I think it's the Des Plaines River, you know, over in, uh, uh, over in North Riverside there. You know, it, no matter how cold it is, I won't be out there. And uh, I just, just can sit in a spot where I have nothing in my view except God's creation. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I really think that 
you know, the Bible talks a lot about it is the, how the creation really glorifies God. Yeah. yeah. And I can really focus on, and I can just think about God and loving God mm -hmm. and connecting to God and I can really think about my heart. Yeah. And I can really think about my life. Come on. Yeah. And uh, I would encourage you to do the same. Come on, Marcus. You know. Wow. Now I've uh, been open about my time by the river. I don't live by the river. Amen. Okay. Amen. Not in the bed. Go down there. In the bed. <laughs> Were you right. born by the river? <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, we, uh, as we study out the rest of Peter here, uh, I want us to really look at it in context of what it really means to live the life in the 21st century. I mean, we're so far removed from what we see in the Bible. I mean, this is written in the first century. There's different times. And, you know, it still is to be applied to our lives today. Mm -hmm. We just really look at it in context of what we need to do. So 2 Peter chapter 1, on, verse 16. He says, For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. I mean, how incredible would that have been? Yeah. I mean, Peter says, we're not making this up. Right. This is not a fairy tale. We were there. We heard the voice of God. We saw Jesus transfigured on the mountain, and then we heard the very words of God. Amen. I mean, you think back to the Old Testament scriptures, how the Israelites heard the voice of God. And they said, we're going to die. We are going to die. Do not have God speak to us anymore. You tell Moses. Let Moses tell us. And then that's how it's going to be. Amen. And, wow. But right here. He's trying to get them to understand. He's like, guys, I was there. Mm. This actually happened. But he says something very, very interesting in verse 19. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. And you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will. But prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. I mean, he says we have the prophetic message as something completely reliable. Nice. <clears throat> if I have an orange and I eat the whole orange, the complete orange, how much is left? Nothing, Nothing is left. I mean, if something is completely reliable, how much is left for unreliability? None. 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 Peter is completely relying on the scriptures, even though he was eyewitness to it. Mm. He says, more reliable than me seeing it was the word of God. Wow. Peter who walked with us. Come on, bro. Another interesting translation is in the ESV. It says, so we have the prophetic word made more fully confirmed. <coughs> mm. The NASB says, so we have the prophetic word made more sure. Made more sure? What could be more sure, Peter, than your eyewitness account? Right. And he says, the prophetic words of God wow. are more sure. Yep. You know, I think we really have to understand this in, in context of, of the times right now. This is the 21st century. There is so much false teaching that is out there. Yeah. Yeah. So many false ideas. So many false traditions, even things that we who really are devoted to the word of God and we understand those things, but how much really, really creeps in? Mm. How much is really creeped in Come on, bro. from generation to generation? You know, there's more false teaching today than there was yesterday. Mm. And there'll be more false teaching on Monday than there is today. Yeah. You guys follow me right here? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there is just... Again, so much out there. And what is our job? Our job is to teach the truth. Yeah. Our job is to teach the truth yeah. and draw in as many people as we can yeah. to just gather everybody into the house of the Lord. You know, it was right. so awesome yesterday just going to the mall with Paul and Henry and Come just on. sharing about what God is doing among us. Yeah. And, you know, and without my focus <coughs> on glorifying God, without my focus on... My folks being on results and getting people, I would have been much more likely to have arguments with these people, much more likely to have confrontations. And yes, there's going to be confrontations, 
when you teach the word of God. Amen. But, you know, we just went out to say, hey, we want to glorify God. Yep. We want to just show people what God is doing and how God, how great God is to us Amen. and God's love. Mm -hmm. And we had some of the best conversations with denominational people I've had in months. Yep. In, in, in really months. And that's what it means to live the Christian life in the 21st century. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus mm -hmm. in this time. Mm -hmm. Is that we're just to gather everyone under one roof. And you, know, you can't be afraid of causing rifts in relationships that yeah. people aren't going to like what you say. You can't be scared. You, you can't care about what people think. Mm. Amen. You just have to teach the word of God. You have to love God with all your heart and show what God is doing. Yeah. And, uh, and Come on, Marcus. Really, it was just incredible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Peter says something very interesting there. He says, again, you pay attention to it like a light shining in a dark place. You know, and we know that bottom scripture so well. I mean, yeah. we learn it over and over again. You know, prophecy never had its origin in the human will. But you know what? I want to tell you a story about a light shining in a dark place. Come on, bro. I want to tell you a story about a ship. A big ship. Mm -hmm. A ship that sailed in 1912. Wow. And this ship was bigger than any of its kind. It was more luxurious, more grand, more marvelous. It was just... In something that would just grab your attention. Mm. And it was sailing in 1912 from England over New York City. Yeah. On what's called the Transatlantic Highway right there. And, you know, out in the ocean there was, on one night it was colder and it was darker than it had usually been. And that ship struck an iceberg. And that ship was the Titanic. Mm -hmm. And I think we know that story very well. And as the ship started to gain water, they started to realize that this ship is not unsinkable. Mm -hmm. It had been advertised as an unsinkable ship, and it yeah. didn't have enough lifeboats for everyone. It was just thought because that, that transatlantic highway right there that so many ships had sailed on, there would always be ships available to help yeah. if someone was in need. So it wasn't necessary, mm -hmm. but not on this night. Wow. And it started to gain water, and it started to become more and more apparent that this ship will sink. We need to get people into the lifeboats. Mm -hmm. And the crew started to urge people to get into lifeboats. They started to set it up, but people were not getting into the lifeboats. Like, why are people not getting into the lifeboats? Because the lifeboats are hanging on the edge of the deck. And the deck is 60 feet down into pure blackness. Mm -hmm. Cold blackness. And people are just looking back and going, it looks a lot warmer, mm -hmm. a lot more well lit up, and a lot safer on this ship. Mm -hmm. And the lifeboats are just, they're, they're, they're rickety. And as they start to get people in, and then the ship starts really, really going down. And now people are getting into the ships, they're getting into the lifeboats, but some of these lifeboats are only half full. Half full. There's only a couple hundred people in these lifeboats at the end of it. And the ship ends up going down, and all the lights, all the power systems turn off for the ship, and it's completely black out there. Mm -hmm. Complete darkness. Completely cold. And the rest of the ship goes down, and there's those few hundred people, those few hundred survivors in the lifeboats. And people are getting hypothermia, people are drowning. Yeah. There's people still dying at this point. And they're just wondering, is somebody going to come save us? <laughs> is somebody going to come get us? Did anybody hear? <clears throat> and who knows what they were talking about? Who knows what they were doing to keep warm? But then you just see in the distance, you just see the light. Beep, beep, beep. There's a ship called the Carpathia. Yeah. They came and got them. And you can just imagine their reaction just screaming and just yelling and just flailing and just paddling just to do anything to get closer to that light. Mm -hmm. This is everything they have, all their strength, all the little bit that's left to be freezing, yeah. but wanting to get closer to that light. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. How closely do you want to live the Word of God? Mm -hmm. I mean, are you begging for it? I mean, are you screaming for it? The Bible studies, the discipling times, yeah. sharing the word. I mean, do you, you beg for the suffering, the persecution, to really know Jesus, mm -hmm. to be a leader, yeah. to really understand what it was like for Jesus, what it was like for the apostles when he walked and tried to lead that many people? Mm -hmm. Is that you? Or is it just, you know, whatever's convenient? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read a little bit today. You know, maybe one day I'll get around to going out there and doing it. Wow. You know, you need to run to the light. Yeah. You need to run to the word of God. It's the only thing that will save you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 
The only thing, <coughs> you know, but how comforting is it to really know the ending? Yeah. To really know what the end is all about. Let's go to Second Peter, chapter three. Come on, Marcus. Come on, Marcus. Second Peter chapter three, verse ten. He says, "But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, and the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare." Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But keeping with this promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. You know, yesterday, as, as I just sat in the mall, as I waited for Henry to get there, you know, I just thought, I could have never imagined my life being what it is now. Mm -hmm. I would have never, in my wildest dreams, ever thought that these are the things that I will be doing, and right. these are the places that I will be going, yeah. mm -hmm. these are the people that I will be talking to. I could have never imagined it, but as I, as I just sat there, I said, you know, I could be doing so many other things right now. Yeah. I could just be doing so much. But I said, well, what else would I rather be doing? Right. Come on, bro. Like, what would I be doing? What would I have been thinking about just not knowing the end? Just wondering. Just, mm. like, where is my life going to go? Mm. Like, what's, what's really going to happen at the end of all this? Yeah. And, you know, I just had such amazing times. I had an amazing week and had such an amazing time to spend with people. Um, I had the amazing opportunity to, to meet somebody uh, on Sunday just on the street randomly, coincidentally, right? No. Uh, no. no. My God. <laughs> right. Okay. And uh, we just had an, an amazing uh, talk on Thursday. Had a time uh, uh, to really get with him and really just talk about his life. And, you know, he said that you just, you just can't talk about your faith anymore. He says, but I feel like I can talk to you. Amen. Wow. And we just talked about life. We just talked about God. <coughs> we just talked about what he was doing. And then we were up till 1230 at night. Wow. You know, on a day that I had to be back up in the morning at 4 o'clock on Friday. Oh. But, you know, and, and I've been doing a lot better. You know, people have been challenging me on, you know, get, getting sleep and everything and being refreshed <laughs> when we're doing with God. And I really have been doing better. Um, you know, it was an amazing time just to do that. And, you know, I, I, I work out a couple times a week, you know, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And uh, I couldn't work out on Friday. I only had like three hours of sleep. Mm. I'm, like, I'm not going to get anything done in the gym. I just need to catch up on sleep, and I'll do it later. And I thought, you know, on Saturday, I would have I definitely been working out. I would have definitely been doing what I wanted to do. You know, getting ready, maybe going out. But yet I'm sitting here in the mall, you know, going over this lesson, and waiting for my brothers to show up, and we're going to preach the word. Mm. Let's see how this goes. And it was a bazillion people at that mall, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, how much peace that I was able to have just knowing that I know how it's all going to end. Yeah. And that before, just thinking, I, I didn't know. I didn't know where it was going. Right. I didn't know what it was doing. I mean, just to know that Jesus is coming back, yeah. that everything will be destroyed, and that God will take those to be with him, those who want to be with him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's really that, that, that simple. I mean, it, it can really be that simple, that God is going to take those to be with him, those who want to be with him. Yeah. It's not really an argument about judgment at all. It, it's, really, it's really not. Mm. It's, if you want to be with God, if you really desire to be with God, if you desire to be close to that light, mm. like those people on those lifeboats wanted that light, yeah. then you will be with God. Amen. Come, on. Come on, Marcus. You know, this. we're so technologically advanced, we do so many things so efficiently that we really trust ourselves a lot more than we trust God. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in this generation. And the more and more we know, the more and more we can do, the less and less that we trust God. The more and more strange believing in God seems mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. You know? And, uh, I mean, nothing is private. Everybody can see everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, as the population grows now, I mean, there's more people on this planet now than there was in the first century. There'll be more people on this planet tomorrow than there was today. Mm -hmm. And we are competing for resources, for jobs. For, for money, for food, I mean, you, you name it. So we're not really forced to really work with each other anymore. Mm. <coughs> we work with each other in small, knit, 
communities and tribes and different things like that. I mean, there's so many ways you can meet people and you can make friends. If someone crosses you, boom, you can get them out of your life. You can go get somebody else in your life. Mm. Yep. You know, and we're not really caused to reconcile with each other out of survival. <clears throat> you know, but the first century church was. And we were. I mean, we're even down to the point where your reputation, again, that, that's every, you put people in your life, people who have good reputations, people who can help you build your life. We have it down to a number. It's called your credit score. Right. And that is your yeah. reputation quantified. Right. I mean, you, you look at someone's credit score, you automatically judge that person. Mm. You automatically can draw conclusions about that person. Mm. You know, but we can't be like that. Right. We need to have the faith to really stand out, to really stand out from the crowd mm -hmm. and not care about what people think. I mean, we have to work so closely together to deliver the word of God to a generation that needs it so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we need it so much because so much has penetrated our minds from so many other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that fill our heads, that fill our lives, that fill our times. And it's not like the word of God. You just got to ask yourself, how closely do I really want to live this? Mm -hmm. How closely do I want to imitate it? Let me strip back traditions. Let me strip back everything. E even traditions that we might have even created in this church right now. Mm -hmm. And really just look back and say, hey, like, are we really going to stand up for the word of God? Come on, bro. You know, you say something like you're waiting for Jesus to come back and you know that the earth is going to be destroyed. I mean, you're going to be laughed at. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, you are, you are going, going to be made a fool of. I mean, that is just something that is... You just, you don't believe in that anymore. Yeah. You know. But what does Peter say? He says, you understand this. You understand this. So then, make every effort to be found blameless and at peace with him. Mm -hmm. The only way to be at peace with God is to surrender. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, what, what are you fighting right now? What are you fighting in your life? What are you fighting for that's just not going your way? It's probably not God's will. And you got to give it up. Yeah. you got to give it up because you won't be at peace. You won't be at peace. But we have the truth. <coughs> we have the truth. We know the end. Doesn't that excite you? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't that just give you, give you some peace? I mean, maybe it won't be like overwhelming fire. You guys are jumping out, throwing your chairs. This and that, but, but you know, right? You know what's going to happen. Yeah. yeah. You, you can live your life knowing the end, knowing that you are going to be safe, that your soul is going to be safe, Come and on. that you can live a life with God, and your life's going to be awesome right now. Amen. You're children of God. You're God's children. What father, what parents doesn't want their child's life to be awesome? Right. right. I mean, you, you have a baby... Amber? Nope. <laughs> Amber. 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 And, and you know, you just you just start thinking about all the great things that that child could accomplish. You know, you, you never you never think uh, you know I want my child to uh, you know to flunk fifth grade. That'll keep them humble. You know, I mean, you want awesome things for your children. You want them to have an awesome life. No matter how many children you have, your firstborn to your lastborn, that is the, that is God with you. He wants you to have an awesome life right now, and He's telling you to end it. Come on. He's telling you the ending. But don't you ever, don't ever be ashamed to say that you are waiting for Jesus Christ to come back. Yeah, come on. Come on. Amen. Yep. Amen. It's just like Peter said. That's how you stay strong. Right. And that's how we're going to rescue people. Amen. That's right. Yeah. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.